same time. This week we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, uh, a great feast, and also uh, always connected with that is uh, Our Lady of Sorrows, so the seven sorrows of Our Lady. There's two feasts of Our Lady uh, of Sorrows, uh, one during Lent, which uh, is mostly the fifth sorrow, Our Lady standing at the foot of the crucifix, and we honor her and her compassion with our Lord, uh, and dishonors the seven sorrows uh, throughout her, her life that, uh, on this feast uh, tomorrow. And this feast is always a, a feast, uh, on both of these feasts, the next one and the one in Lent is the principal one, but this is a secondary one. Uh, for the sisters, so the sisters of Our Lady of Compassion, uh, who are the ones that take care of the Eucharistic Crusade for us, and this is their, these are their feast days. Uh, they're, they're, they're our sisters of Our Lady of Compassion, they honor Our Lady, and they try to stay with Our Lady at the foot of the cross, and uh, be there with our Lord suffering. The epistle for today is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be made desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, and if any man be overtaken in any fault, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens, and so you shall fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so he shall have glory in himself only, and not in another. For every one shall bear, bear his own burden. And let him that is instructed in the word communicate to him that instructeth him in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in his flesh, of the flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit, of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And in doing good, let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap, not failing. Therefore, whilst we have time, let us work good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. And please stand for reading the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus went into a city called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude. And when he came nigh to the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Weep not. And he came near and touched the bier, and they that carried it stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother, and there came a fear on them all. And they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is risen up amongst us, and God hath visited his people. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So last uh, Sunday we saw which were the works of the flesh and which were the works of the spirit. And uh, St. Paul mentions a couple of these works of the flesh again, envy and avarice, so don't let them be uh, amongst you and we have to uh, avoid them. If we, if we sow in the flesh, we will reap of the flesh and if we sow in the spirit, we will reap of the spirit, we will reap holiness. So we want to do always uh, the works of the spirit. But to do the works of the Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost, this is, the first thing that's required and the foundation of every good work is humility. So St. Paul uh, says, uh, why do you glory in yourself when you are nothing? He tells us that in the, in the epistle today, for you are nothing, and uh, that is true. And so we need to uh, not uh, seek, seek our own good and seek uh, to suffer from the pride of life. This is also what our Lord uh, told St. Teresa of Avila. He said to her, Teresa, I am he who is. You are she who is not. He told her and she, she accepted that and she had great humility so she rose to the great heights of, of sanctity because of her great humility. It was also Our Lady 
who admitted, well, God has exalted me because of the humility of his handmaid, because she considered herself the least of the handmaids of our Lord, and uh, the least of the slaves of our Lord, and uh, God then uh, did exalt her to the heights uh, far above any other creature. So uh, she had the greatest of all humility uh, of any creature. But the council, the Vatican council, the second Vatican council, adopted uh, what was proclaimed uh, at uh, the French Revolution, the Declaration of the Rights of Man, and they said, well, over the centuries now, uh, uh, man has evolved, we've realized our great dignity, uh, the great dignity that each one of us has, and uh, so we were very dignified, and because we're dignified, well, we are uh, like the gods, so we can each choose for ourselves which is good and which is evil. So if I think envy and avarice are good, well then I'm free to choose that and they're not sins for me, they're all right for me because uh, we're up to the state of where we are like God. This is where they proclaim this great dignity of man instead of pro proclaiming what all the saints have claimed, the humility of man. It's, uh, well, they, since over the centuries, see when St. Francis was there, he thought man was had to be humble because he was a mere creature dependent upon God for everything. Without God, we can do nothing. St. Francis understood that. But modern man now, according to the council, contemporary man has evolved far beyond that. And now we realize that we have great dignity in our own. We don't need this humility. We don't need this meekness. Now we can uh, decide uh, without humility, without meekness, we're going to be responsible for ourselves. And we have our individual uh, responsibility where we can decide for ourselves, uh, how we'll worship, and what is right and wrong. This is the foundation of the whole new uh, conciliar religion. The new mass is not a sacrifice offered to God in reparation for our sins, or, or to ask him for things, or to thank him for his great gifts to us. No, it's a, where we sit down at the table with our Lord, and we share a meal with him as friends among equals. And we are equal with him, we're equal with God, and we have a common meal. This is what the new Mass is. It's not uh, where we honor God or we glorify God. No, we, we put ourselves up equal with God and we, are, we consider ourselves to be gods too. Uh, this was the same temptation that uh, Eve succumbed to in uh, the paradise. You will be like gods, knowing good and evil. Now the Council has said, modern men are like gods, knowing good and evil. This is uh, the conciliar church, how it fits in well with the world, it fits in uh, with uh, the modern world who uh, has said, yes, we, we believe in man, instead of saying we believe in God, now the, 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 we say, no, we believe in man, we believe in this great dignity of man, and we believe that we can each do this. But to be saints, uh, that's not going to make us saints. You know, the only way we can be saints is to be humble. That's the foundation virtue, as I said, all the virtues are given to the humble person. The humble, the humble soul, God fills with virtues, and the proud, he says, empty away. And that's why so many souls are being sent empty away today. They're empty without any graces. They go to the mass, they don't get holy. They get sent away empty because they are proud and there's no way God can give them holiness. Uh, he can't give holiness to a proud person. And the council wants us to be proud. They wants us to have this self-esteem. This is what's taught in the schools, that we have to have self-esteem and esteem ourselves and uh, put ourselves first and be selfish and be avaricious and be envious of others. Yes, that's all good uh, because we shouldn't be have many of the goods in the world because we're, we're so, so good ourselves. So we should be envious of those who have more. We should be avaricious of uh, all these virtues that St. Paul condemned. Well, we should have those because they are <coughs> something that is due to us because of our great dignity. So the new church is undermining the entire spiritual life. If we don't want to have a spiritual life. We just want to have a social life. And uh, our, our holiness will be to uh, feed the hungry and uh, clothe the naked and uh, save the whales and save the animals. And, uh, 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 be environmentalist. And this would be, I will show that we are uh, good. And, uh, and these things uh, are, are good to do, of course. It's good to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. Our Lord said us those are works of mercy. 
but uh, they, they merit us nothing if they're not done for the glory of God, if they're not done uh, out of humility. And now we, how St. Paul says, when we instruct one, look to ourselves, lest we fall uh, as well. So we have to uh, instruct in all meekness. And, and these virtues were condemned by uh, uh, the, the already a hundred years ago, or maybe more than a hundred years ago now, by Father Hecker and others, and they, they made a distinction of passive virtues and active virtues. And passive virtues would be meekness and humility uh, and this, and active virtues would be to go and uh, feed the hungry and clothe the naked. These are active virtues. And they said, no, we have to have the active virtues. It's not the time for passive virtues. So we want to get rid of all these passive virtues. Don't worry about them, but practice the active virtues. Those will make us holy. And the religious order is founded on that. They brought in this modernism and liberalism from a, a, a long time ago and promoted it. And so we have to say, no, before we can do anything, we have to be meek and humble of heart. These are the two things our Lord told us to learn. They're not passive, they're, 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 they're meekness and humility, yes we're not out there doing something uh, for our neighbor with those, but we are uh, uh, meriting the ability to do something truly worthwhile for our neighbor, so that we can instruct the ignorant, and we can teach, teach them how they have to live and how they have to behave uh, to be truly holy. And so we want to ask Our Lady to help us to imitate her humility and to realize that we are nothing. We are nothing, and uh, uh, we are totally dependent upon God for everything. And we cannot raise our little finger without the assistance of God. We cannot uh, ask for anything without the assistance of God. We're dependent upon Him, and we need to honor Him and give Him the glory. And we need to do our work for His honor and glory. So we have to ask Him to help us to become humble, and ask our Lady that we might uh, imitate her. And we want to truly learn from uh, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, learn of me that I am meek and humble of heart.